In this tale, every emotion is raw, every moment charged with intensity, offering a gripping invitation to witness a love that is both tested and transformed. This is the story of Toby and Linda Taylor, a story that begins with a simple yet powerful act of a wife handing her husband a pair of delicate panties, unknowingly setting the stage for a journey that will redefine their lives. So, without wasting more time, let's dive deep in the story. As I sat there in the doctor's office, the world seemed to tilt on its axis. The word sterile echoed in my ears, reverberating against the walls of my reality. Linda, my beloved wife, sat next to me, her face a mask of shock and disappointment. The doctor's voice faded into the background as I grappled with the gravity of his words. For years, Linda and I had dreamt of a family, of little feet pattering around our home, of laughter and chaos that children bring. Now, it felt as if those dreams were slipping through my fingers like grains of sand. I glanced at Linda, her eyes brimming with unshed tears, and my heart ached. I knew how much she yearned for a biological child, a little being that was a part of us both. The drive back home was heavy with silence, each of us lost in our own thoughts, grappling with the reality that had just unfolded. As we entered our home, the emptiness of it seemed to echo around us, a stark reminder of the family we might never have. That evening, as we sat across from each other, our meal untouched, Linda finally broke the silence. Toby, what are we going to do? Her voice was barely a whisper, laced with pain and uncertainty. I reached across the table, taking her hands in mine. Linda, I know this is hard. It's devastating for me, too. But remember, we have each other. We'll figure this out, together. There are other ways to have a family. Adoption, perhaps. Let's not lose hope. Linda's eyes searched mine, looking for reassurance, for strength. But I wanted our child, Toby, our own flesh and blood. I know, my love, I know. But maybe this is a test of our love, our resilience. We've always been strong together, haven't we? Let's not let this break us. Our dream of a family can still be a reality, just maybe not in the way we had initially imagined. As the night deepened, we sat together, lost in our thoughts yet united in our sorrow. The journey ahead seemed daunting, but I knew one thing for certain. Our love for each other was unwavering, and together we would navigate through this storm, one step at a time. The tension in our home was palpable, a heavy cloud that neither of us seemed able to dispel. Linda's anger and disappointment were like a wall between us, one I desperately wanted to break down, but didn't know how. Her words from the night before stung deep, and her icy demeanor that morning only served to deepen the wound. As I drove to work, my mind was a whirlwind of emotions, hurt, confusion, a sense of inadequacy. Linda's reaction, though extreme, was somewhat understandable. The dream of having a biological child was as important to her as it was to me. Yet, the manner in which she was handling her disappointment was tearing us apart. At work, I tried to focus, but Linda's words echoed in my mind, drowning out the usual business concerns. I couldn't shake the feeling of being less of a man, as she put it. It was a medical condition, something beyond my control, yet it weighed on me like a personal failure. I realized that this was more than just about not being able to father a child. It was about our relationship, our bond, and how we navigated through life's unexpected challenges. It dawned on me that perhaps this was a test of our love and commitment to each other. As the day wore on, I made a decision. I needed to approach Linda, not with defensiveness or hurt, but with understanding and love. I had to be the anchor in this storm, the steady force that would help us find our way through this. That evening, I returned home with a heavy heart, but a clear purpose. Linda was in the living room, her face etched with the day's worries. I sat beside her, taking a deep breath before speaking. Linda, I know you're hurting. I am too. This isn't something I ever wanted or expected, but it's happened and we need to face it together. I can't change my medical condition, but I can be here for you, with you. Our dream of a family doesn't have to end here. We can explore other options, find other ways, but whatever we decide, I want it to be together. She looked at me, her expression softening slightly. Toby, I just... 
I had this picture in my mind of what our family would look like. You, me, and our children. It's hard to let go of that. I understand, Linda, and I'm not asking you to let go of that dream right away. I'm just asking for us to be open to creating our family in a different way. Adoption, though not what we initially planned, could be a beautiful journey for us. It's not about replacing our dream, it's about reshaping it. Linda was silent for a moment, then nodded slowly. I need time, Toby, time to process all of this, but I'm willing to try, for us. A wave of relief washed over me. It was a small step, but a step nonetheless. We'll take it one day at a time, I said, squeezing her hand gently, together. That night, as we lay in bed, the distance between us seemed a little less vast. The journey ahead was uncertain, filled with challenges and tough decisions, but for the first time since we heard the news, I felt a glimmer of hope. In that moment, I knew that no matter what the future held, we would face it together, as a team, as partners in every sense of the word. As I prepared for the company picnic, I couldn't help but feel a mix of anticipation and apprehension. The picnic was an annual event that everyone looked forward to, a day of relaxation, fun, and camaraderie. It was a day when the stresses of work were set aside, and we all came together as a community, rather than just colleagues. Yet, under the current circumstances, I wondered if Linda and I could truly set aside our personal turmoil, even for a day. I watched Linda as she moved about the house, her movements lacking their usual grace. It pained me to see her this way, but I held onto a sliver of hope that the picnic might offer us both a brief respite, a chance to breathe, and perhaps find a moment of happiness amidst the storm that was our life. As we drove to the picnic, the car filled with a tense silence. I tried to make small talk, pointing out the beautiful weather and the scenery, but Linda's responses were short and distant. I knew she was trying in her own way, and I appreciated her effort. The picnic was in full swing when we arrived. My employees and their families were scattered across the park, engaged in various activities. The smell of barbecue filled the air, and the sound of laughter and music created a festive atmosphere. I greeted my team with a smile, doing my best to appear normal, to mask the turmoil inside me. Linda excused herself to sit under a tree, away from the crowd. I joined her after a while, bringing us some food. We ate in silence, observing the joy around us. I wanted to reach out to her, to bridge the gap that had formed between us, but I was unsure how. As the afternoon progressed, I participated in some of the games and activities, trying to bring some semblance of normalcy to the day. Linda watched from a distance, a faint smile occasionally crossing her lips. It was a small change, but it gave me hope. As the picnic drew to a close, I sat beside Linda, watching the sunset paint the sky in hues of orange and pink. Linda, I began hesitantly, I know things have been hard, really hard, but today seeing you smile, even just a little, meant a lot to me. She turned to look at me, her eyes reflecting the colors of the sky. Toby, I know I've been difficult, and I'm sorry. It's just, everything feels so overwhelming. I took her hand, feeling its warmth. I understand, and I'm here for you through all of this. Maybe we can find a way to navigate this together, to figure out what our next steps are. We don't have to have all the answers right now, but I don't want to lose us in the process. She squeezed my hand gently, a silent acknowledgement of my words. Let's take it one day at a time, Toby. That's all we can do. As we drove home, the weight of the past week still hung over us, but there was a new sense of connection, however fragile. The road ahead was uncertain, but I was determined to face it with Linda, to rebuild our relationship one step at a time. The challenges we faced were daunting, but in that moment, I believed that as long as we faced them together, we could overcome anything. As Sue revealed the final items she had purchased with the remaining money, Linda's expression was a mix of curiosity and apprehension. Sue, with a hint of mischief in her eyes, pulled out a pair of high-heeled shoes and a selection of makeup. Imagine him in these, she said, holding up the heels, a playful tone in her voice. This will really make a statement. Linda looked at the array of items spread out before her, a whirlwind of emotions swirling within her. Part of her was intrigued by the idea, 
a way to externalize her frustrations and disappointment. Yet, another part of her felt a twinge of guilt, knowing that this was far more than just a symbolic gesture. It was a direct challenge to Toby's identity and masculinity. As she gazed upon the dresses and accessories, Linda's thoughts wandered to Toby. She remembered the man she fell in love with, the strength and kindness he had always shown her. In her heart, she knew that Toby's inability to father a child did not diminish the man he was. Yet her pain and confusion clouded her judgment, leading her down a path she never thought she would tread. After Sue left, Linda sat alone, surrounded by the garments and accessories, lost in thought. The reality of what she was considering began to weigh heavily on her. She questioned whether this would truly bring her any solace, or if it would only serve to widen the growing chasm between her and Toby. As the morning sun rose higher in the sky, Linda made a decision. She couldn't go through with it. This was not the solution to their problems. It would only cause more pain and resentment. She quickly gathered all the items Sue had brought and stored them away, out of sight. When Toby returned from golf, Linda was waiting for him, a newfound resolve in her eyes. As he entered, she approached him, her voice tinged with a mixture of regret and hope. Toby, we need to talk. I've been doing a lot of thinking, and I realize I've been unfair to you. This situation isn't your fault, and I'm sorry for how I've been acting. Toby, surprised by her sudden change in demeanor, listened intently as Linda continued. I want us to work through this, together. I want to find a way to move past this, to build a life together, even if it's not the one we originally envisioned. As they sat down together, the air between them felt lighter less burdened by the weight of unspoken hurt and anger. They talked openly and honestly, discussing their feelings, fears, and hopes for the future. It was a difficult conversation, but a necessary one. That evening, as they sat quietly together, a sense of peace settled over them. The road ahead was still uncertain, but for the first time in weeks, they felt united in their journey, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, hand in hand. The darkness that had threatened to engulf their relationship was receding, giving way to a renewed sense of love and understanding. In that moment, as Linda watched me awkwardly maneuver in the high heels and unfamiliar garments, a sense of power and control seemed to settle over her. The transformation she orchestrated was more than just a physical alteration. It was a symbolic manifestation of her deep-seated frustrations and the pain of our unfulfilled dreams of parenthood. For me, standing there in the spare bedroom, adorned in attire so foreign to my identity, a profound sense of helplessness engulfed me. Each item of clothing, each layer of makeup that Linda applied, felt like a further stripping away of my self-worth and masculinity. The realization that I was participating in this, driven by my love for Linda, and my desperation to bridge the chasm between us, only deepened my sense of despair. As Linda finished the transformation, stepping back to appraise her work, her expression was one of mixed emotions. There was a fleeting glimpse of satisfaction, perhaps a sense of vindication, but it was quickly overshadowed by a look of confusion and doubt. It was as if, in seeing me in this way, she began to question the path we had found ourselves on. Linda, I said, my voice barely above a whisper, the unfamiliar weight of the breast forms and girdle constricting my chest. Is this what we've become? Is this who we are now? Linda's gaze met mine, and for a moment, there was a flash of the woman I had married, the woman I loved. Toby, I... I don't know, she admitted, her voice trembling. I thought this would make me feel better, but seeing you like this, I'm not sure anymore. We stood there in silence, the absurdity of the situation hanging heavily in the air, it was a pivotal moment for both of us, a stark realization that the path of resentment and blame we were walking was leading us nowhere but further apart. That night, as I lay in the spare bedroom, the echoes of our earlier conversation replaying in my mind, I knew something had to change. This was not the solution. This was not the way to heal our relationship or come to terms with our situation. The next morning, I found Linda in the kitchen, her eyes red from a night spent crying. As I approached her, she looked up, a sense of regret etched on her face. 
Toby, I'm sorry. I let my anger and hurt take over, and I lost sight of who we are, of the love we have. I took her hand, feeling the familiar warmth of her skin. Linda, we're in this together, no matter what. We both hurt, we both are lost, but we need to find our way back to each other. We can't let this tear us apart. We sat down, talking openly and honestly, laying bare our fears, our insecurities, and our hopes. It was a difficult emotional conversation, but it was a start, a step towards healing and understanding. We agreed to seek counseling, to find a way to navigate our grief and rebuild our relationship. The journey ahead was uncertain, but as we sat there hand in hand, a sense of hope began to blossom. In acknowledging our pain and facing it together, we found a way forward, a path back to each other. The challenges we faced were daunting, but with love and commitment, we were ready to face them together. As I, Toby, now being called Teresa, lay there in the aftermath of what had just transpired, a complex mix of emotions churned within me. The physical intimacy, once a source of shared joy and connection between Linda and me, had taken on a new, disconcerting dimension. My identity, already shaken by the recent events, felt further fragmented by Linda's demands and the role I was being coerced into playing. Linda's actions, driven by her pain and anger over our situation, had led us down a path that was far removed from the loving partnership we once shared. As I returned to the spare bedroom, the heaviness in my heart was palpable. The garments I wore, the name I was called, they were symbols of a deeper issue, our inability to cope with the reality of our childlessness and the resentment and despair it had bred within us. Lying alone in the bed, the unfamiliar feel of the nightgown against my skin, the absence of body hair, the lingering scent of the floral lotion, all served as stark reminders of the surreal turn our lives had taken. The silence of the house was broken only by the occasional distant sound of Linda moving in the other room, a reminder of the physical and emotional distance that now lay between us. As I lay there, a realization dawned on me, this charade, this facade we were maintaining, was not a solution. It was a manifestation of our pain, a misguided attempt to exert control over a situation that left us feeling powerless. I knew that we couldn't continue down this path. It was destroying us, eroding the love and respect that once formed the foundation of our marriage. The next morning, I awoke with a sense of clarity. I needed to confront the situation, to communicate openly with Linda, to try and find a way back to each other. As I made my way to the kitchen, the sound of my heels clicking on the floor felt like a reproach, a reminder of the absurdity of our current situation. Linda was already in the kitchen, her expression one of contemplation. As she looked up at me, her eyes met mine, and for a moment, I saw a flicker of the woman I had married, the woman I still loved. Linda, I began, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside me. We need to talk. This, all of this, I gestured at my attire, isn't helping. We're lost, both of us. We're hurting, and we're taking it out on each other in ways that are damaging to us both. Linda's gaze didn't waver, but I could see the walls she had built around herself starting to crumble. Toby, I, I don't know what to do. I'm so angry, so hurt. But I know this isn't right. I know I'm hurting you and I don't want that. I'm just so lost. I moved closer to her, the distance between us feeling insurmountable, yet desperately needing to be bridged. I'm lost too, Linda, but we won't find our way by hurting each other. We need help, professional help. We can't do this alone. Her eyes filled with tears and she nodded slowly. You're right, this isn't us. This isn't who we are. I'm sorry, Toby, I'm so sorry. As we stood there in the kitchen, a fragile moment of connection amidst the chaos of our lives, we made a silent vow to seek help, to try to mend the rift that had grown between us. The journey ahead was uncertain, but for the first time in what felt like forever, there was a glimmer of hope. A hope that, together, we could find our way back to each other, back to the love that once defined us. As Linda sat in my office, relishing the idea of gaining control over the company and our shared assets, the dynamics of our relationship had shifted dramatically. 
the pain and anger that stemmed from our inability to have children had taken a dark turn, leading Linda down a path of retaliation and control. It was a far cry from the loving partnership we once had, now morphing into a situation of dominance and dependency. Meanwhile, I, Toby, dressed in the blue dress Linda insisted on, sat at home feeling a deep sense of loss and confusion. The man who had confidently run a successful business, who had been a loving husband, now found himself in a surreal and demeaning situation. The fabric of the dress against my skin was a constant reminder of the strange, uncomfortable reality I was living in. As I mechanically went about cleaning the living room, my mind was a turmoil of emotions. I was hurt, embarrassed, and felt utterly powerless. The situation at home was becoming intolerable, and now, with Linda taking control of the business, it seemed my professional life was slipping away as well. The realization hit me hard. I was losing everything I held dear, my dignity, my identity, my marriage, and possibly my business. The pain of being unable to father a child had been hard enough, but this, this was a different kind of torment. In the office, Linda's conversation with Sue marked a turning point. Her decision to potentially seize control of the company and the house was not just about exerting power over me, it was a reflection of her own deep-seated pain and helplessness. However, this route of seeking control and retribution was only causing more harm, deepening the divide between us. As the day wore on, Linda found herself immersed in the business, her mind occupied with something other than our personal troubles. But even amidst the paperwork and decisions, her thoughts occasionally drifted back to me, Toby at home in the dress, and a pang of guilt would strike her. Back at home, as I finished the cleaning and sat down in the quiet house, a sense of despair washed over me. I knew that this couldn't go on. We were both losing ourselves in this spiral of hurt and retribution. It was time for a change, time to confront the situation head on. The following morning, I made a decision. Dressed still in the clothes Linda had left for me, I went to the office. The surprise and confusion on the faces of my employees were palpable as I walked in, but I was determined to face Linda, to try and salvage what was left of our life together. Linda, I said as I entered my, now her, office. We need to talk. This, all of this has gone too far. We're destroying each other and everything we've built together. We need help, professional help. We can't continue like this. Linda looked up, her expression a mix of surprise and contemplation. The sight of me in the dress, in the place where I had always been a figure of authority, seemed to bring home the reality of what we had become. You're right, Toby, she said after a long pause. This isn't us. This isn't what I want. I'm sorry. I let my pain and anger take over, and I lost sight of what's truly important, us our love, our life together. As we sat there in the office where our dreams had once flourished, we both realized that it was time to rebuild, to heal the deep wounds that had been inflicted. It was going to be a long and difficult journey, but for the first time in a long while, there was a glimmer of hope, a chance to start anew, to find our way back to each other. As I, Toby, now in the guise of Teresa, sat alone in the house, the reality of my situation hit me with a crushing weight. The realization that Linda had manipulated me into signing away my role in the company and the house left me feeling not just betrayed, but deeply wounded. The relationship that we had built together over the years, one that I had thought was rooted in love and mutual respect, had devolved into a one-sided game of control and revenge. The tight red dress and high heels, meant to humiliate and constrain me, were a far cry from the life I had known. I was no longer the confident business owner and loving husband, but a pawn in a cruel game that Linda was orchestrating. Her suggestion of me becoming a hooker was not just a jibe at my emasculated state, it was a testament to how far our relationship had deteriorated. As I struggled to complete the household chores Linda had assigned, each movement restricted by the tight dress and uncomfortable heels, my mind raced with thoughts of what to do next. I was now effectively cut off from my livelihood. My home was no longer mine, and my wife, the person I had loved and trusted more than anyone, had become unrecognizable. 
Despite the overwhelming sense of despair, a spark of resolve ignited within me. I couldn't continue to live in this manipulated, demeaning state. The first step was to confront Linda, to try and understand why she had taken such drastic actions. Beyond that, I needed legal advice to understand the ramifications of the documents I had signed and to explore my options. Later that day, when Linda returned home, I gathered my courage to confront her. Dressed in the red dress that had become a symbol of my subjugation, I waited for her in the living room. Linda, I began, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside me. We need to talk about what you've done. Taking over the company, the house. This isn't just about punishing me for something I had no control over. This is about us, our marriage, and what it's become. Linda, taken aback by my assertive tone, paused before responding. Toby, you don't understand. I'm doing this because I'm hurt, because I feel betrayed by life, by you. But Linda... I interjected. Punishing me, taking everything away, won't heal that hurt. It's only driving us further apart, destroying everything we had. The conversation that followed was intense and emotional. Linda's pain and anger, stemming from our inability to have children and her perception of being let down by me, had driven her to these drastic actions. For me, the feeling of betrayal and loss was overwhelming. Yet I knew that if there was any chance of salvaging our relationship, or at least parting on amicable terms, we needed to communicate openly and honestly. As night fell, we sat in a house that no longer felt like a home, surrounded by the shattered pieces of our marriage. The path forward was unclear, but one thing was certain. Things couldn't continue as they were. We needed to find a resolution to move beyond the pain and anger, and to make decisions about our future, both together and as individuals. The road ahead was uncertain, but it was a road we needed to navigate one way or another. As I continued with the preparations for dinner, my mind was a whirlwind of emotions. I couldn't help but feel a deep sense of humiliation and loss. The role I had been forced into, that of a maid serving my own wife and her guest, was a stark contrast to the life I once knew. The mere thought of curtsying to the guest added another layer to my growing sense of degradation. Despite these feelings, I focused on the task at hand, ensuring that the meal I was preparing was up to my usual standards. Cooking had always been a passion of mine, a way to express my creativity and care for those I loved. Even in this twisted situation, I held on to that small piece of myself. The doorbell rang, and I took a deep breath, bracing myself for the encounter. As I opened the door, I was greeted by the sight of a man in a business suit, his expression one of mild surprise as he took in my appearance. Swallowing my pride, I remembered Linda's instruction and performed a small curtsy, feeling every bit the part of the subservient maid Linda had turned me into. Good evening, I greeted the guest, my voice strained. Please come in. Linda will be with you shortly. The guest, a middle-aged man with a polite smile, nodded as he entered. Thank you, he replied, clearly trying to mask his curiosity at the unusual situation. I led him to the living room, where Linda soon joined us. She introduced the guest as Mr. Reynolds, a potential new client for the business. Throughout the evening, I served them dinner, trying to maintain a semblance of dignity, despite the humiliating circumstances. As Linda and Mr. Reynolds talked business, I couldn't help but feel a sense of loss, this was my domain, my company, and yet here I was, relegated to the role of a maid, watching as Linda confidently handled the discussions I used to lead. After dinner, I cleared the table and began washing the dishes, my mind racing with thoughts. The situation had become untenable. I knew I couldn't continue living this way, subjected to Linda's whims, and reduced to a shadow of my former self. It was clear that our marriage had reached a breaking point and drastic changes were needed. Later that night, after Mr. Reynolds had left and Linda had gone to bed, I sat alone in the kitchen, lost in thought. The realization that my marriage, my identity, and my life as I knew it were slipping away was overwhelming. It was time to take action, to reclaim my life and dignity, even if that meant facing difficult decisions and an uncertain future. The following morning, I resolved to seek legal advice and explore my options. 
I needed to understand the legal implications of the documents I had signed and find a way to regain control of my life. It was a daunting prospect, but I knew it was the only way forward. The path ahead was fraught with challenges, but I was determined to face them, to emerge from this ordeal with my dignity intact and a renewed sense of self. As the dawn broke on a new day, bringing with it the soft morning light that filtered through the curtains, a sense of hope and renewal permeated the air. The previous night's conversation between Linda and me, Toby, had been a turning point, a moment of raw honesty and vulnerability that had begun to bridge the chasm that had grown between us. Linda's tears and her admission of losing sight of what truly mattered had opened a door to reconciliation, to understanding and forgiveness. For the first time in what felt like an eternity, there was a glimpse of the love that had once been the foundation of our relationship. As I served Linda breakfast in bed, dressed in the maid's outfit, but this time with a playful smile and a loving kiss, it was a gesture not of subservience, but of affection and a shared joke between us. It was a sign that while the wounds were still fresh, the healing had begun. In that moment, as Linda smiled up at me, the pain and humiliation of the past week seemed to fade into the background. We were still far from where we needed to be, but the path forward seemed a little clearer, a little less daunting. The decision to let Linda continue as the president of the company was not just about maintaining stability for the business. It was an act of trust and faith in her abilities, a gesture that acknowledged her strengths and our partnership. For me, Finding new ways to contribute and stay engaged presented a challenge, but also an opportunity for growth and new beginnings. The journey of healing and rebuilding our relationship was not going to be easy. There would be setbacks and difficult days ahead, but as we lay in bed that night, holding each other close, it felt like we were finally moving in the right direction. We had both made mistakes, let our pain and anger drive us to actions that we regretted. But in acknowledging those mistakes, in choosing to face them together, we had taken the first steps towards healing. The future was uncertain, but as long as we were willing to work through our issues together, to communicate and support each other, there was hope. Hope for forgiveness, for rebuilding our bond, and for rediscovering the love that had brought us together in the first place. And so, as the morning sun rose higher, casting its warm glow over the room, it felt like a new chapter was beginning, a chapter where understanding, compassion, and love would guide us back to each other, back to the life we once shared and the future we still hoped to build together.